goodness. I'm waiting for the clock because we have a five minute timer going on the live video before we start. I got the thumbs up. Thanks, Joe. <clears throat> so, so a couple of things. First of all, really glad you're here on Back to Church Sunday. Uh, welcome in the name of the Lord. We're going to have a uh, time of worship inside, which I'm glad we kept it inside considering the temperature outside. <laughs> And, uh, and then afterwards, we'll have fellowship outside with some prepackaged uh, snacks and coffee, tea, and things to help you warm up and to just enjoy the fellowship with each other. I'm glad to see some of you wore your T-shirts. That's why we bought them. Um, <clears throat> so, so in order to wear a T-shirt like this on a day like this, you need some under, under gear. <laughs> so here I am, and my wife said to me, you going to church like that? I was like, <laughs> what? She goes, you look like an American flag. You okay with that? I was like, Aww. yeah, I'm okay with that. So here I am, American flag Nick. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything else, any other announcements, things that we need to let everybody know about? Anybody have something? No? Good. All right, why don't we stand in the presence of the Lord and worship him in spirit and in truth. Got to turn the guitar on. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yes, we have a video. Sit back down. <laughs> Thanks. Went on autopilot there. The changes brought by COVID-19 have been difficult. Our lives changed overnight as everything shut down. We were forced. The changes brought by COVID-19 have been difficult. Our lives changed overnight as everything shut down. We were forced to deal with isolation in a way we'd never experienced. Suddenly in the midst of the darkness, God showed up like he always does. Turning fear into faith, quarantine into connecting, and downtime into precious time. Relationships were strengthened unexpectedly. And another thing changed. People all over the world, including our friends, neighbors, coworkers, and families, became more open than ever before to hearing the gospel of hope. The pandemic shook us, but it did not crush us. We shared good times and bad times virtually. We realized what is truly important in this world, each other. The church rose up to help those in need and to be the hands and feet of Jesus during this difficult time. We found out we are stronger together. As life returns to normal and things reopen, we'll never forget how important our relationships are and the value of spending time with loved ones in person. As we're able to gather again face to face, think of every person in your life at every age and every stage. They're waiting on an invitation to church from you. Because in every way that God connects us, we are stronger together now more than ever. Okay, now please stand. Unless you can't, then you stay seated. That's okay. And let's worship the Lord. Great are you, Lord, mighty in strength. You are faithful, and you will ever be. We will praise you all of our days. It's for your glory we offer everything. Raise your hands, all you nations, shout to God. Lord, most high. 
Where you send us, God, we will go. You're the answer we want the world to know. And we will trust you when you call our name. Where you lead us, we'll follow. Lord a hand of praise. Can you imagine singing praises to our God in person forever and ever and ever? Amazing thing to think about.
You turn it for good. You turn it for good.
Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. today our God with everything we have for you are worthy 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 of our praise and our worship thank you Lord for your great gift to us the gift of your son the gift of salvation in Christ in whose name we pray amen you may be seated <coughs> Well, we have a little special treat for you today. It appears our guitar player got inspired one day. We got the big boy guitar today. <laughs> <laughs> and he wrote a song, and then Susie and him got together and she wrote the words. So uh, because they were so important to him to express his heart, um, we're going to put the words to the song, even though it's a special, we're going to put the words to the song up on the screen so you can get a hold of that yourselves too, okay? God bless.
tough act to follow. <laughs> Holy moly. Awesome. Great stuff. Great stuff. So I just want to point out to, to you all that I am a man of my word. Last week I told you I'd wear the T-shirt. All right. I got it on. Uh, but as my sister Diane had to point out to her husband today, I added a little fashion sense to it. And uh, actually, I did it more for warmth than anything else. So uh, great to be together with you today. Glad you can make it for uh, Back to Church Sunday. Um, we have been looking at what do you want and uh, really kind of really just pointing out what we, what we need. And when some needs get so heavy on us, they can display themselves as wants. And uh, this week, we're going to be talking about touch. And I want to ask you a question before we get started. How important is touch to you? Think about it. How important is it? How much has the lack of it highlighted it in our lives? Um, someone I hadn't seen for months was here, and I, I had to sneak up on him this morning. I put my hands on his shoulders. Just say, it's so good to see you. Glad you could make it today, you know. I want to tell you how important touch is. 2013 report by Stanford University Medical Center said this. Talked about the benefits of touch. Listen to this. For babies and parents, the first hour of skin-to-skin -skin contact, listen to this, helps regulate a baby's temperature and their breathing rate. Actually helps them cry less. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Tiffany came marching in this morning and she had Eliza and Eliza would not let go. She was like, I got a white knuckle grip on her mother. And I, Tiffany's known she's got to come up here. Why? Because touch is that important to us. It means so much. And it carries such significance, more than we can even understand. It's what our minds can't comprehend. The body is picking up on it. It's like, like, like a radar, you know? And so... It helps the baby not cry. And listen, it increases a mother's relaxation hormones. After the trauma, after the, the pushing and the breathing and all the coaching, just causes the mother to relax. And it's been proven that throughout all ages that caring touches strengthen bonds between people of all ages, hugs, and kisses, affection, affection. So newsflash, if you don't know already, affection, connection, and touch are essential, right? That has been the big, big word during COVID. What's essential, what's non-essential? Seems to me touch is essential, something that we really, really can't live without. And we're going to kind of explore that today as we look at Christ's interactions, his touch on people's lives. The first I want to look at is Matthew, in Matthew 9, and <laughs> I couldn't help it. If you have seen, if any of you have seen the, the story of Jesus of Nazareth, it's old, it's dated, I know, but uh, to, uh, an actor by the name of Tony Franciosa plays Peter, and I love the line when Jesus is coaching him and the disciples to say, you know, we you know, we're going to go to Matthew's house for dinner tonight. And Peter is outside wrestling and drinking. And, um, and he's, he's trying to drown his sorrow. And he said, he wants me to go in and eat with that blood-sucking Matthew. You know? Just think about what was going on there. Jesus goes in and he's going to have dinner, not only with Matthew, but a bunch of his co-workers. Jesus says in Matthew 9.10, Jesus reclined at the table. He made himself at home in the house of Matthew. Behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and re were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. People that others did not want to have anything to do with because of their reputation, because of their actions, as if that should justify why we should not come in contact with people. You know? Well, you know, so-and-so. As if it, if it should justify why we should avoid people. Well, you know what they believe. You know what they think. And Jesus is saying, I know and I don't care. I came here to touch them. I came here to spend time with them. I came here to reach into their life and do something 
that no one else can do. Reach into their life and do what God, my Father, has sent me to. And so he reclines with them. A man who has this stigmatism about his life. And you know what? Any one of us could fall into that, right? The Romans come in. They institute laws. They lay out taxes. And Matthew sees an opportunity to get ahead. How many of us have been there in that place in our lives? Where the opportunity to get ahead overshadowed whether it was right or not. What, whether we would weigh out the outcome of what would take place if we went out into that venture. And that's what Matthew did. And he ended up, ended up being hated for it. But the bottom line was, regardless of what his actions were, God didn't hate him. God wasn't avoiding him. So much so that he sent his son to touch that man's life. And not only that, to bring him into his inner circle. People that you and I would want to push out, God is saying, I want in. And I, I have something significant, something that I want to do in their lives that you may not understand and you can't see. And think about your own lives. Think about where you've been, because I know I can think about where I was. That God would actually come in, put his arms around me and say, come with me. You sure? Yeah, come with me. I, I, I want to do something in your life. And he does that with each of us. Each of us. We move on from Matthew. We, we, take a, we take a look at someone who no one would want to touch because, you see, if you touch them, you might catch anything. You might catch something. Can you relate? Don't get too close. I might breathe on you in such a way that, I, and I don't know, I'm fine, I'm healthy, but I might be asymptomatic, so you got to watch me. Well, this guy had a real issue. He had leprosy. He was unclean. He was contagious. Let's look at Matthew chapter 8, verses 2 and 3. It says, And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus, listen, stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. You just love it. Say, because Jesus looks at you and I, and he doesn't care what we have. Amen. Going on in our lives, going on in our hearts, right? We could sit here and say, man, if you only knew where I've been, what I've done, what I've said, how I've acted, how I've reacted, you'd want nothing to do with me. And God says, that doesn't matter to me because I love you so much, I came here to touch your life. I came here to put my hand on you, put my hand on your heart, put my hand on your life, and not just touch your life, but touch your family's lives. Everyone that comes in contact with you, you see, because the one thing God wants contagious is his presence in our lives. He wants other people to get it, you know what I mean? He wants all the people to catch it because that's what he came here for, to lay his loving touch on us. And it doesn't matter. All the things that matter to us does not matter to him because he looks past them. His love is that great. And oh, how, how great it would be for us, for you and I, to do that, to be there because that's what God has called us to. That's what he's called the church to do. But that's what he calls us to do as a people. And then we'll move on from there, from the leper and his skin problems. And we look at the fact that, that Jesus would allow others to touch him. Such as prostitutes. And even the ultra-religious who were off base. You know, Jesus never looked at the believers, the, those, those people who claim to know God and believe in God, and they'd be so off base that he never said, you know what, you know better, you should know better, get away from me. And Jesus, Jesus proves it, because we're going to look at where Jesus comes in contact, and he allows these two types to make contact with him. We look at Luke chapter 7, verses 37 to 38, 
Jesus is invited into a Pharisee's home to eat. And he accepts the invitation. Would you expect Jesus to do anything else? And while he's there, they have a visitor. We pick it up and it says, And behold, a woman of the city. Maybe you can refer to her as a woman of the night. The red light district. Who was a sinner. And when she learned that he was reclining at the table of the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. So picture Jesus reclining at the table, but it's not like tables like you and I sit, right? They're down on the floor. And I can imagine his feet, his legs are kind of bent behind him. You know, he's doing one of these, and his legs are behind him. And she comes in, and she, you know, she knows she's not welcome there. She knows, she, uh, you know, eyes are going to roll, you know. But she goes there because Jesus is there. She goes there because Jesus is there. And can you imagine her when entering, standing behind him and standing kind of over him, and the tears profusely rolling down from her eyes so heavy that they're dripping down on his feet, you know? And it, and it became so heavy on her that she ends up getting down and kneeling behind him and drying his feet with her hair and touching them and anointing him. Jesus allowed that. Allowed the unclean sinner who... God knows where she was and who she's been with to touch him, to touch him. And even though the Pharisee in the house and his, his guests would murmur to themselves, if he was a righteous man, if he was a holy man, if he was a prophet, if he was someone special, he would know who this woman was. Well, Jesus knew who she was. And it didn't care. He didn't care. It didn't matter to him. You see, because he came to touch, but he also came to be touched. Came to touch, and he also came to be touched. Now, Jesus' desire is to touch all of us, everyone. But uh, have you ever been around anyone who you seem to not be able to get near? You know, they, they don't want to be touched. Something is happening in their lives. And I find when people are like that, when they can't even pick up their head and say hello uh, or acknowledge you, there's something going on deep inside them. And a lot of times people will not let someone else touch them because they're in pain, quite often great, great pain. I thought about uh, a scenario of that kind of uh, thing, a story I'll just share with you briefly. Um, I don't know, you probably already know this because I told you I'm a, I'm, I, I like movies. I have to watch myself. I, have, I kind of have a propensity, kind of an addiction. My confession to you, all right? But I know you won't judge me because you love me, all right? So I love war movies, too. And uh, Mel Gibson did a movie called We Were Soldiers. And again, one of my favorites because it's, it's based on true life. And it's about um, a division of soldiers that were in Vietnam and fought in the valley of Durang. And it was November 14th, 1965, and the man that he portrays is Lieutenant Colonel Harold Moore. And they go into this area, they land, and they're surrounded by Vietnamese. And little by little, they're getting accosted. They're confronting. They're going back and forth, fighting. Some of their men have been pinned off to one side of the valley. He's on another. They're, 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 they're on a flat piece of land, and the enemy is just coming down in droves out of the mountains, surrounding them and coming at them. It got bad, so bad at one point that uh, Lieutenant Colonel Howard, Harold... Howard, ah. <laughs> got to get this to work a little better. Didn't lubricate it enough this morning. Uh, he called in a bombing attack. And what they did was they dropped napalm bombs. Now, for those of you who don't know what napalm does, when they explode, they release a, a gas, a fluid. And anybody who is in the wake of that bomb when it lands is burnt. 
Well, one of them landed. It, they, 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 were, they were calling it in because the enemy was so up against them and so close that one of the bombs landed. And uh, a first, uh, private first class by the name of Jimmy Nakayama was caught by a bomb, napalm bomb, friendly fire. And uh, in the movie, you get to see that um, when they go to pick him up, because the bomb, uh, uh, okay, a, a couple of weeks ago, was uh, roasting marshmallows with my granddaughter at, their ho at the home of my, my son and daughter. And uh, you, know, you know, when you roast the marshmallows, if you, you, you put them in too much in the fire, how they crust over and they burn and they turn black. And when you go to bite it, it can peel the whole skin off the marshmallow. That's exactly what happened to Jimmy when they went to go pick him up to put him in the helicopter. And you could see he's screaming in pain as they're trying to touch him and load him in. And sometimes you and I can find others maybe even find ourselves in such a place where we're hurt so badly that we don't want to be touched by someone else. We don't want to be handled. We don't want people to come near us, or they don't want us to come near them. It's not a personal thing. It's not like they, your, your breath is bad, or they don't like your hair, or the clothes that you're wearing. They're just in great pain, and they're not going to tell us. But they still need to be touched. They still need to be loaded up onto that helicopter and taken to safety and be saved, right? And so we come across that quite often. And then there are times when it just registers. You know, when our radar is fine-tuned that day and we have found and come upon something that requires our care and our attention. So uh, back... In 1992, how many of you remember the L.A. riots? Right? Uh, just a lot of chaos in L.A., a lot of rioting. And uh, we had uh, a gentleman by the name of Reginald Denny, right, who was pulled from a truck. Uh, and while that was happening, it was being broadcast on the news, four individuals came to his aid. Uh, the first, and I'm probably going to mispronounce her name, is Lee Yuli. The second was Terry Barnett. The third was Titus Murphy. And the fourth was Gregory Allen, Allen Williams. And um, they came to Reginald's aid. Uh, Yuli was watching and saw on the broadcast the whole thing going down as she was watching the TV and later as she was, it was reported, she said, my brother, my brother was in the room, he looked at me and he said, we're Christians, we've got to go and help him out. And she said, right. And they grabbed the keys and they went out to help him. There's, there's a shot, snapshot. I've given you a few snapshots this morning of the kingdom of God. Jesus touching the leper. Jesus, Jesus allowing himself to be touched by the prostitute. Jesus sitting down and having dinner with Matthew. And now we have these individuals running to an aid. Four black people running to aid of one black man to save him from a beating, a terrible beating. Reginald Denny was beaten with fists, kicked, and hit with a cinder block. Doctors said that if they would have gotten there any later to get him into his own truck, one of them had a license to drive his trailer, put him in his own truck and drove him to the hospital. Doctors said if he got there any later, he wouldn't have lived. As it was, he had months and years of rehab ahead of him. Can you imagine that? Now, can you imagine this? Imagine the Godhead in heaven looking down and talking amongst themselves and saying, we have to get down there. 
just as Leah's brother said to her, we need to go, God said, we need to get down there. We need to get down and put our hands on these people and touch their lives and let them know there's another way. There's another way. And so we know Jesus showed up. And he began to touch those closest to him. And for what purpose? So that they would be able to go and touch others. And that's why he touches us. He touches us because he loves us, but he also touches us because he has a purpose and a plan for our lives to go out and touch others, to make a difference in someone else's life because God is present and God wants to touch. And how does he touch? Because we can become his hands. We become his feet. We become his voice. We get to speak into other people's lives and, and care for them. But at one point, Jesus had to go. And uh, I guess on the surface, it would appear that it, he would distance himself, uh, that he was going to depart. Here we have a God who says, I got to go down. Now he's telling him, I got to go. I got to leave you. But he actually said it like this in John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now, on the surface, if they were catching any part of this, and we, we realized it wasn't until it actually happened that they actually catch it, that what Jesus meant, that he, he, he had to go, he's, he had to die. What advantage would, would that be? Well, they come to learn, as we already now know, after the fact, that his going meant greater accessibility. A God who could not just walk the earth, but had no limitations. Because he was sending his spirit. And he was sending it into his people. And it would go from one person to another person to another person because his desire was to touch everybody. Regardless of their race, color, or creed. Regardless of where they lived. Regardless of their conduct and actions. He came, he wanted to touch people's lives because he knew that the only thing would, that would change a person's life was his touch on it. The only thing. The only thing. And so in order to accomplish that, he had to go. And it would be to their advantage as they then began to engage with the plan he had for them. See, that's the advantage of the kingdom of heaven is that his presence, his spirit lives in you and I and now we can go and touch in his name and make a difference in his name. And by placing his spirit in us, he provides, the spirit provides fruit, conduct, actions that make a difference in other people's lives. Look at a very familiar scripture with me in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22, 23a. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. See? Those are the fruits that make a difference in the lives of people who have open wounds. And, by the way, there's not one of us sitting here today that doesn't have some sort of open wound. I speak from experience. And if it's not visibly on our, in view of when we look in the mirror, hang out with some people. Have you ever been there when you've been with company and somebody says something and all of a sudden you feel a sharp pain in your, in your, you know, in your heart? Oh man, <coughs> said something that triggered something in you and in me, or somebody does something or says something and it's like a gut punch, you just feel it deeply. You may not even know what caused it at first, or you may feel 
the reasons on the surface, but it dates back, predates to something that was either done in your life or said to you or how you were treated or how you were mistreated, and you feel it. It's a wound, a wound that God wants to get his hands on because he loves you that much. He wants to put his hands on you, and he wants to make you and me well. And he knows our lives from the day we entered to the day we depart. And every pain and wound that you've ever suffered, he, he knows because he knows you. He knows me. The Bible tells us he knows the numbers of the hairs on our head, even as they decline. You know? You know what I mean. So before I go this morning, I, 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 I want to get, get personal with you. I've been here two years. I don't think I've really gotten really, really personal with you. So I, I, I want to risk it. But I want to ask you this. Are you connecting with God? Are you touching God? You got that spark going on? Comes from connection? Where you're touching him and he's touching you? And you, you know it. You know it. You just, you know the goodness of God. You, you're sensing it. There's, there's just something wonderful that's happening. Something he's said to you. Something he's whispered to you. An act, a small act of kindness from maybe a stranger. You know? The sense that, 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 that peace you get when somebody puts their arm around you or says a kind word. Or somebody smiles and holds the door for you. Or simply says, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for everything that you've done. Yeah. You say, I'm not sure. Well, I want to ask you this morning. Here's where I want to get personal. Is there, is, how's your fr fruit basket looking? Okay. This is your basket. Right here. Is it empty? Or is it full? Is it empty or is it full? You see, two things I'd like to just focus with you on before we go is kindness and goodness. It's a lot of craziness that's happened since COVID's hit, you know? And, and, it, and it's so easy to, to start measuring people and, and judging them and because they don't believe what we believe or they're... they're, they're, they're they're either too nervous or frightened or full of apprehensions because of the unknown or they're very, very free, you know, and it's almost like they don't care about anything or anyone, you know. It, it's so easy to get off track here. And we live in a time where we need to have our baskets full, you know, of kindness and goodness and expressed to one another. And, and I, I, I put out... Uh, 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 a request in the email that I send out every Friday. If you don't get it, please let me know. I'd love to have your email list, your, your email address, and I'd love to include you in it. But I talked about, and this is where I want to get personal, I talked about those of you who, who are part of the forever family here, as we have called ourselves, right? That to, can, you, can, you, can you be kind and exemplify goodness at times when we have people who are coming in and visiting? You know, can we, can we who, who live here, so to speak, week in and week out, you know, if need be, sit downstairs in the overflow room if it makes people feel comfortable and, and, and gives them a sense of peace, you know, and welcome. Yeah. Because of the whole social distancing thing. It's going the extra mile, you know. It's, it's just displaying what God has given us to do and to be as a people of God, you know. And you don't have to do it every Sunday, but, you know, if you went to the... You went to the ushering team and said, I'd be one of those people, you know? And then, you know, maybe on a rotating schedule, if we needed the room upstairs, you would be one of those people. I, I know I would, I would jump at the chance if I, was, if, I, if, I, if I could and I was in that place. And, and I just want to encourage you in this way. And, and I'm sure you can relate to this when I tell you. From the day, from day one when Jesus first touched my life, I mean from the moment he entered, 
I, I've just wanted nothing but others to get that same touch. You know? Um, it, nothing really matters more to me because I know what he's given me and what he's poured into my life. And why wouldn't any of us want that for our neighbors and the people that are closest to, the people that we love, you know? And what could we do? What, how far can we go? And what extra mile can we, we, we walk in order for that to happen? And whether it's making room in the sanctuary for visitors and people coming in for the first time, to, doing, to, to, to letting somebody, you know, go online before us or... You know, or just smiling, you know, or telling somebody that you understand. You know? See, because that's, that's what God has done. He has come to touch you and I, and in his leaving, he's left us his spirit so that you and I can go and touch others. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. It's just going that extra mile. So I thought this morning before we go and we have a moment of quiet prayer, where are you at? <laughs> you know? Do you know, are you, are you here today? Are you sitting with uh, an open wound? Something that, that hurts? And you don't have the answer. I can't tell you how many times I have, I have a, a wound that, I, I, no matter what I do and try, it's not closing up, you know? Put all the basset tracing, all the band-aids, all the butterfly band-aids on there. It's not closing up. And it's, then I get, like, you know, the wake-up call. Like, you know. You know the only one that has t what you need is the Lord. So what are you, tr what are you doing? Yeah. So are you sitting here today and you have, you have an open wound? Or maybe just this past week or month or so, or months, you know, someone said something to you or did something or didn't do something that left you in pain. Hurting. You know, each of us are only human. For the record, we're all going to let each other down at least once in life. <laughs> right? But there's one who will not let us down. He may ask us to wait, but he'll never let us down. Wherever you're at this morning, I, I want to give you a moment to seek him. For me, the most important part of prayer is this. As someone once said, God gave us one mouth and two ears, and there's a reason for that, because he wants us to listen more than he wants us to speak. So I would like to take a moment of quiet with you right now and invite you to come before him. Well, you are before him, but invite you to be, have it come into a more heightened awareness of the fact that he's here and that he loves you and he has something he wants to say to you. Well, take a minute. Let's do that, and then we'll close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this moment. Lord, you hear the hearts of your people. In fact, I know by faith, oh God, there isn't one person, one set of thoughts in any one of us that you have not heard <coughs> and that you do not receive. You welcome it all. Lord, I pray, oh God, for those who need a certain touch 
in a certain area of their lives, oh God, Lord, that they would sense your loving hand upon them, oh God. If it's emotional, if it's physical, Lord, whatever part of their lives it relates to, oh God, we pray and ask that you touch it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank Amen. you for listening. Numbers chapter 6, starting at verse 22, reads like this. And the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And so they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Stand with us and join in if you can. Oh
face toward you and be gracious to you and give you his peace throughout this week. Enjoy the fellowship outside. We ask the Lord's blessing upon it. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>